Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how to measure the velocity factor of a piece of transmission line like coaxial cable using your antenna analyzer. For the what and why of it, please refer to my introductory video on this subject. Now this method is not restricted to 50 ohm coax, so you can use, uh, I'm using a piece of 93 ohm coax for our experiment today. I've done this with uh, 75 ohm coax, 50 ohm coax, but you must know the physical length of that piece of transmission line that you're doing this experiment with. So you need to get your measuring stick out and measure that uh, to know that physical length. You also need a reasonable sample to work with. You don't want a little micro piece and you don't want 800 feet either. You want something reasonable, maybe 8 or 12 or even 50 foot is not too long to work with. So with that, we ask the question, how do you actually go about this process of measuring the velocity factor using your antenna analyzer? Well, let me tell you. So let's talk about the how of doing this measurement. First of all, you can connect directly to your antenna analyzer. No special jigs or anything. Then you set your antenna analyzer to its lowest possible frequency. Then you go up in frequency, slowly going up in frequency. What you're looking for is a dip in the X value as indicated by your antenna analyzer. Once you find that dip, it actually should go all the way down to zero. Once you find that dip, take the frequency of that, multiply it by three, and then go to that new frequency just below that new frequency and begin going up in frequency again, nice and slow. You'll see the X value slowly going down and going down until it just reaches zero. And kind of jockey back and forth there until you determine the frequency at which it just turns to zero. Note that frequency as F1. Then Continue going up in frequency until it just pops up above zero and start going down again, jockey back and forth right around that point where it is zero and then non-zero until you can figure out what frequency it is where it just pops over to zero and note that frequency is F2. Once you have these two frequencies, then you have to just do the math. But why didn't we use the first dip? Why not that one? Well, the first dip is when the, the physical length of your piece of transmission line is exactly the same as the electrical length of, the, of, of a quarter wave at that frequency. The second dip is when we're at a three-quarter wave. Well, why not use this one? Well, it turns out that for whatever reason, this second dip yields a more accurate, more precise uh, measurement of the frequency where this occurs. So that's why we're using the second dip and not the first dip in this measurement. And so once you've done the measurement, then you have to do the math. To begin with, we have the two frequencies at either end of that dip, and we have to average the two so that we can find out what frequency is at the very bottom of that dip. So we take the two frequencies, we add them together and divide them by two. The next thing we need to know is the speed of light in free space. It's this big funky number, which I have in inches per second because I like measuring the length of my coax and in inches as opposed to feet and it's 11802852677.1653 inches per second and we're going to call that C 
the speed of light in free space. Next, we want to calculate the length of one quarter wavelength in free space. And so that is the speed of light in free space divided by four times this frequency up here that's been divided by three. Remember, this frequency represents the frequency at which the physical length of our coax is equal to the electrical length of three quarters of a wavelength. So in order to get one quarter of a wavelength, we have to divide the frequency by three. Once we know the length of a quarter wavelength in free space, then we can calculate the velocity factor. We take the physical length of our coax and we divide it by the length of the quarter wave here. And that will give us the velocity factor, which should be a number somewhere between zero and one. Generally speaking, it's going to be somewhere like 0.6 to 0.8, somewhere in there kind of as a sanity check. Now that we have done the math, we have the velocity factor, we're good to go. Now let's go ahead and do the measurement as an example of how to go about this process. So here is my roll of coax. It is 13 feet, 11 inches long as measured. And I have connected it directly up to my antenna analyzer. All right, so we are ready to do our measurement here. We've started out nice and low in frequency, and you'll notice that the impedance is very high. So we're going to slowly increase our frequency and watch our impedance. And as we go up, I've gone through up through each of the scales. And as you can see, my X value has dropped significantly. This is the first dip right here that we're, we're heading into. And as we come into the dip there, notice that the X just turned to a zero right at about 11.447 megahertz. Let's note that frequency. Having noted that frequency, we have multiplied it by three and we get 34.332. So we're going to go immediately up to that area. Notice my X value is again pretty low. And so now we're going to increase our frequency until the X value drops to zero. Notice how it's going down. Oh, it dropped right to zero. Now what we're interested in is the very first frequency where X equals zero. So we're going really slow. And there it is at, back up a little bit. Looks like 36.030. We will note that frequency. All right, now, once, now that we have 36.030, we're going to continue going up in frequency until X oh, just pops over non-zero. We're gonna back up just a little bit, very, very, very carefully here until we hit the spot where it equals zero again. So we're going down ever so slowly in frequency. And we're down, up oh, there it is, oh, oh, oh. 37.368, 37.368. Now that we have our two frequencies, we can do the math. All right, we've done our measurement. We've arrived at two frequencies, one at the lower end of the dip, one at the upper end of the dip. 
So the very next thing that we need to do is calculate the average of the two. So if we put in those values in here, we put in our 36.030 plus 37.368, and we add those together and divide by two, our F zero is 30, 6.699 megahertz. Now we already know the speed of light. And so here we're going to put our F0 in. So this is 36.699 times 10 to the sixth. Remember that this frequency that we put in here has to be in hertz, not megahertz. So we have times 10 to the sixth here. 36.699 times 10 to the sixth. We do this math here and we discover that the length of a quarter wave length in free space is going to be 241.2 zero nine three inches. Now we know the physical length of our coax is 167 inches. We have now discovered that the length of the quarter wave is 241.2093 inches. And when we do this division, we discover that the velocity factor of our piece of coax is 0 0.6923. So there you go. Velocity factor of our coax is 0.6923. In the next video, we're going to be investigating how to do this using time domain reflectometry. Don't let that scare you. It sounds all funky and weird and hard and technical. It requires an oscilloscope and a signal generator. That's all there is to it. Very easy, very straightforward. Until then, toodaloots and thanks for watching.